Rom Steele here again. So game number two, well, technically number three, but number two that I'm doing coverage of for the Loam tournament, the Lords of Middle Earth tournament. Um, so this is game two against Lonely Mountain. Uh, so I'm free peoples this time. And the, the setup I've been experimenting with is putting out one Hobbit because I, I feel like it reasonably defends the dew line and it only costs you one corruption point. Um, and I feel like if you take out two companions, then the fellowship is pretty weak. And especially if the chief gets on your early corruption is a very real danger in this expansion. So, so anyway, that's what I'm experimenting with. Um, like I said, I really don't know that I, like, I don't have this expansion all figured out or anything. So if there's a, if there is a one correct opening for the free peoples, I'm not sure what it is yet. So there might just not be, I don't know. Um, okay. So I start with red arrow and I will go alone. Always nice to see scouts. Um, and he's got down force falling. The ring's mine. So. Okay. Um, so he allocates one eye and rolls two more. And I roll this. So what would have been kind of cool against a zero muster start from him, because he couldn't even, he can't even get the Balrog. Like, like there is no um, minion bringing in power whatsoever here. Not unless I give him a ring. Um, it would have been cool if I rolled enough dice to crown Aragorn this turn. Uh, just that would feel like a pretty cool start to the game anyway. But but no, um, if I had... Actually, no, I, you know what? Never mind. That is possible. Because I have I Will Go Alone, I could use that with a Palantir and then use a ring with the Muster Dice and then move him again with Will of the West and then crown him with Will of the West. But that's, uh, I don't know. Especially in Lords of Middle-Earth, spending a ring turn one is... Uh, it hurts just because the rings are so much more powerful that it... it yeah. Anyway. Um... Right, so I think for a little bit, and I, I do the usual just Rohan and North move, uh, especially with having scouts in place. It feels good getting that army in Old Forest Road. So he draws a character card. I draw a strategy card. Right, well, I guess I'm not going to play either of these cards, so, so that's reasonable. Um, he plays The Ring is Mine. I move the Fellowship. I get hit, and it's a zero reveal. Um, I say this feels familiar because that's exactly how our first game went too, um, with him getting hit with the zero reveal right at the start. So, um, which is a rough start for the free peoples for sure. Um, so he, I guess, is feeling like his military is going to be pretty slow. So he's thinking about putting Nazgul on top of me just to really commit to harassing me. But he decides to go ahead with moving armies too. So you got to get the military pressure moving it. And of course, he's probably going to roll a muster next turn. So he'll be able to get the chief on me right away. So putting a Nazgul on top of me is somewhat inefficient. So I, I think that's probably the better play to just keep moving armies. Um, okay, I play Swords in Eriador and redraw into a strategy card. So Book of Mazarbul is obviously a cool card to see too. Um, that's one of the upsides to starting a Hobbit out in the Shire is that that's very possible for him to get to Herod Lewin and, and do that. It takes either half an army movement to walk him over to Tower Hills or an extra character movement. Uh, and, and then you can play Book of Mazarbul. Okay, um, and then I also get Fear Fire Foes. So that's just, that's a crazy start. Um, like, it feels very good to have separated a Hobbit. And it's turn two, like the start of turn two. And I've already picked up Book of Mazarble and Fear Fire Foes. Like, that's just crazy. Um, and I get this spectacular roll. So that is a good um, Aragorn crowning roll right there. But I might also want to run and try to kill Gandalf and hope I can get him. But it's... Oh, no, wait. No zero musters, right? He rolled zero... Yeah. Yeah. I'm just commenting in the chat how he has rolled zero musters or H's in two turns. Uh, that's spectacularly bad. Um, okay. So I move the fellowship with Gandalf's Narya die. And I get hit again. And it's a two reveal. So I think I... Oh, I just take the corruption. Interesting. Weird. Again, this game was a little while ago, so I don't remember what I did here quite as well. Oh, right. I want to save Gandalf as guide because I'm, <coughs> um, you know, planning on going through Moria. And it's specifically like, you know, say it goes slowly and poorly. If I'm still there next turn and when the Balrog shows up and it draws an eye, then he kills the guide. I don't want that to be Strider that he's killing there, you know. Um Now he shuffles Nazgul, um, committing to the corruption play. Okay, yeah, here we go. I was also thinking like this. Oh, yes, 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 this is great. Okay, so I send Strider and Boromir out 
um, to the south with I Will Go Alone, right? I was also specifically taking corruption damage so that I could play I Will Go and Go Alone and get that corruption healing. Um, yeah, okay, great. I like that I make sense sometimes. That feels good. Um, okay, so he walks an orc out on top of me to keep the corruption pressure on. And yeah, now I play Fear Fire Foes. Uh, so Pippin brings the north to war by just sitting there in the Shire, and it allows the companion uh, Strider and Boromir to run to Dol Amroth for his crowning. Um, and of course, Boromir's presence is what activates Gondor there. Um, so I crown Aragorn, and he plays his other red tile. Okay, he's got hill trolls and candles in there too. Um, okay, so I've still got... I did move the Fellowship once, so I've still got Gandalf's Narya die too. It's interesting for me. I usually don't end up crowning Aragorn, so this is... It's just interesting looking at five dice plus the Narya. That's not something I'm used to looking at. Um, okay, so he allocates two eyes this time, which I think makes sense. Like when you have the two re-rolls and you only roll one die, uh, and you only have one eye in there, that feels really bad. Um... <laughs> yeah, the musters, they exist because he's finally rolling musters for the first time in this game. Um, so yeah, here's another question of what do you actually do here as both free peoples and as um, shadow. So I think I end up moving first here. Yeah, I move right away because I, I'm hoping to not get revealed and um, I'm hoping to get through Moria with less damage rather than more anyway um but i get hit and it's an eye so it's a two reveal so that hurts anyway um so i lose gandalf and then i you're right have a tile drawn because it's uh because i'm revealing in a stronghold and i just take the three corruption there and i don't lose Gimli. I find that interesting i think i might have already been having thoughts of going for a free people's military victory here um, and, and if it is a free people's or, or no, I'm also thinking that I'm going to gear up militarily, like since I've already crowned Aragorn and I have this, these extra dice that I'm going to just let the corruption stack up a little bit. And then I'm going to sit in Lorien for a long time and I'm going to heal up. I think that's the plan right now. Um, and while the fellowship is healing up, I can bulk up my defenses and maybe go for a military victory. That's the plan right now, I think. Uh, right, so now he brings in the Witch King. I hide the Fellowship. Now he brings in the Balrog. Makes perfect sense. Um, I move again because, I don't know, you got to move sometime. I get hit, and it's a one reveal. That's very painful stuff. Um, so Balrog first. Yep, yeah, it's a one. And now for the Stronghold, and it's a zero reveal. So, yeah. Um, interested that I use the Muster to play Imrahil. Very interesting. I would have thought I might use the muster for getting some more boots on the ground since I have the North Door. Or I might use this Palantir, like use Boromir's ability to try to muster Gondor down to war so they can prepare. But, but oh well, it, it's an adventure. Exploring what I do. Oh, no, I do change. Okay, I use the P instead of the M for playing that. Okay. Okay, so he musters Sauron down to war. Um, I guess he wants to attack Gondor, like since he sees Aragorn sitting over there. Um, oh, right, and he wants Gothmog in too. Yeah. Um, okay, so I muster Gondor down, and he plays Candles, um, and he gets one hit. So okay. Um, so I've got Horn of Gondor, which is a little bit sad since I separated Boromir. Uh, so my Narya die is gone. Okay. And he makes the two keeper dice strategy look good because um, he gets to pick which one of these to take. And if you want to keep both dice, then obviously it makes sense to keep the uh, Gothmog dice since that one doesn't have a star on it. So it's not going to go away. Um, okay, so I hide the fellowship and he walks out with an orc and the chief there. And I remember thinking to myself that, oh, I w I'm, I'm really tempted to get the elves to war here so I could attack and maybe kill the Witch King. Like, since we, because he's sitting with an orc, that means that if that orc dies in combat now, then the Witch King is dead too. Right. Um, right, okay, so I use Boromir's here, ability here to continue mustering Gondor to war, which seems a little odd to me. 
because like this army is clearly planning on attacking us Gilead, so that would have gotten me to war anyway. I mean, maybe it's going to run out of Pilar gear, but I could have waited until he did that first. Okay, so he brings some south runs over. I play the red arrow. Yep, that's always that's a very satisfying card to get to play. You know, like the muster down and the uh, one and a half musters of troops there. Like it, it feels good. Um. Okay, so he musters the Southrons to war. That's right. And I also remember I was specifically planning on saving my movement for the last move of the turn so that um, if he does have a card like Nazgul Search or Nazgul Strike or Orc Patrol that would reveal me afterwards, then um, by moving last, he doesn't have an opportunity to hit me with one of those and I can declare into Lorien and begin my uh, long healing. Oh, yes, and the other plus side to moving companions. Now, like, these guys are here, and he just mustered the South Run, so clearly he's uh, thinking about Corsair. It's like, if he has it, yeah, he doesn't have it, but he's, you know, getting set up for it if he does pick it up, so I'd rather Aragorn wasn't there. Um, Boromir, maybe I could have left him there, but I'm, I'm still having my free people's military thoughts, like, especially with Rohan, um, with the Red Arrow being played. Uh, maybe these guys on Rohan can do something cool. Um and also getting to move Pippin over here so that I can play Book of Mazarbal. And then with the North and the Dwarves at war, they can do some mustering up here. And this is also a good threat. Um, it's it's nice if you can with uh, Free People's military attempt. Having like two armies is is feels like the way to go to me anyway. Because um, that way, like each one just gets one stronghold. And there you go. Yeah. Oh, he plays Flocks. Yeah, yeah, good move. Um Specifically for trying to keep me from, like, it's more likely to hit me, more likely to reveal me, so then I can't declare into Lorien. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, then I play Book of Mazarbal, and that's right. The other plus side is I get to send these guys over to Edoras and activate Rohan right now, so that, um, you know, there's no huge risk of Rohan, uh, not of Rohan, of, of Worm Tongue stalling out Rohan for a while, anyway. And bizarrely, it's turn four, and every Free People's Nation is active without the Witch King being, like, without the uh, Black Captain being in play. Normally, that's how you get all the nations active. Normally, that's a plus side to the Chief, is that all these nations aren't active. But between Aragorn and Boromir and Fear Firefoss and Book of Mazorgal, just everyone's active. Yeah, which is just really weird. Um, okay, so he attacks Osgiliath with the South Athelian army. Um, I play advantageous position here because the North's already at war. What's the likelihood he's actually going to come out to Shire? Not that high. Um, he gets two hits anyway. Just, just roll sixes. Easy. Um, I get two hits back. Good step for battle. Um, and of course he presses. So I'm still going to get to go first next turn. So I'll still have time to muster an elite Minas Trit. So I, I go ahead with my plan of moving the fellowship and he uses flocks and he misses anyway, which is just crazy. Like that's the first real stroke of good luck. The fellowship has had all game. Anyway. Like I suppose it could have gone worse against the Balrog anyway, but, uh, um, yeah, just that's the first step they haven't got hit, and it was far in the way the most likely to get hit. So it's just, um, I always find it a little weird when I say something and then I click through in the game and I said exactly that in the chat at the time. It's like, am I actually a person or am I just really predictable? Am I just a robot that says the same thing in the response to everything all the time? This is not the first time that's happened in a video either. Anyway, um, Okay, so I pick up Smeagol helps nice matter, nice master, and last battle. Last battle is always interesting because I could actually play it, and that might actually be huge. Um, like after the fellowship is healed up a bit in Lorien, maybe Aragorn steps off to the side with a Rohan army here, and then you could play last battle, and then and then maybe that makes my life a lot easier for getting to Mordor quickly. I don't know. It's it's not impossible. Um, so of course I declare in Lorien because the fellowship needs it. Um, he puts in two eyes. And uh, rolls another one. So I guess he just wasn't... Like, he just wants to keep the corruption pressure on in case I start moving again, I guess. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, so I muster an elite Minas Drith. Um, he attacks Minas Drith. Um, I draw a card. I guess I, what else am I going to do with that die anyway? Um... I remember thinking for a bit here about separating Legolas 
specifically so that I could muster down the elves more easily here. Um, because if I separate Legolas and put him there in Lorien, then um, I can use him to muster down the elves quicker, and then I can muster up more elites in Lorien to make it more defensible, because I'm worried about, um, you know, like the uh, Dol Guldur and Moria joining up here to crack Lorien so I can't keep healing up. Um, and yeah, that's what he's doing. He's coming for, for Lorien there. So I place me, go help his knife master. He activates the Balrog. I muster the elves down. No, nope, I think about it. I muster Rohan down the step. Okay. Um, I think I'm also having thoughts of using there and back again. Um, is it, let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, oh, no, wait. There's no move in the fellowship. So that's only three movement anyway. So I could play there and back again and then move them and get these companions off to Woodland Realm so that Legolas could help muster down. But then, of course, they're not getting there on the there and back again movement. And also then I don't have Smeagol, so I'm really, like, giving up on the Fellowship if I do that. So, I don't know. Um, okay, he plays down first volley. That makes sense. Um, I end up using that character die to move. And I move Pippin and the Dwarves here. Um, yeah, again, uh, they're... They're having thoughts of maybe going from Mount Gundabad, going from Moria, maybe just getting Angmar. If um, if I pick up dead men, maybe these guys can go get far hard. It's not it's not impossible. Um, I think about it. Oh yeah, I play safe paths in the dark here. Interesting. I guess I want to. No, never mind. That just doesn't make sense to me. I feel like I want to save that to get rid of. We shall get it. But oh well. Um, okay, and then I muster Rohan all the way to war. He musters Saruman to war. There we go. Okay, so I declare in Lorien again and keep healing up. Okay, so Goth Mog's die rolls an eye, so that one goes in the box. And Gladriel also rolls an eye, so it's just five eyes in there. So I'm definitely planning on staying in Lorien for another turn. Like, why set out against five eyes if you don't have to? Um, I remember being frustrated here with the lack of musters I've had the last couple turns, especially when I'm, like, getting excited for a free people's military win. Like, I would really rather have musters so I could just start stacking up an army in Rohan here, or maybe with the dwarves here in Erebor, you know? Anyway. Um, but I have Ammer here, so that helps. Um, and I decide to put it in West Mnet. Right, I remember just thinking, like, you know, if I am going to try to run with the ring, then this army would be better off being able to walk to Helm's Deep. Um, but this army is probably going to run for Dol Guldur if that army keeps going, or maybe to Orthanc if it doesn't get mustered. Um, so that's why I leave in West Ham that anyway, just a little more flexible. Um, he musters the Southrons to war. It's pretty funny seeing the elves being the only nation not at war. You definitely don't see that every day. Um, okay, now he plays Shadows. So yeah, now he's definitely got a strong enough army to take out Lorien anyway. Right, and now I separate Legolas to Woodland Realm. I'm not sure if that makes any sense or not. I, I guess the plan is that then I can use, because he's going to bring these armies together, and then maybe I'm going to muster the elves down twice with these two dice. Then they'll be at war, and then I can muster in with Galadriel at the start of next turn, I guess. I don't know. Um, okay, he brings in an Isengard elite. I play right. I remember <clears throat> for some reason I thought win from the West only meant discard a shadow character card from the table. So I didn't think Denethor's Folly got in the way. Um, so I asked him to lay out all his cards so I could pick one to chuck. But uh, but no, if if I'm playing that right now, that means I'm chucking Denethor's Folly. Um, so I don't do that because that feels like a waste. Um, instead, now I move Pippin and the Dwarves down. He play He picks up a card. I muster the elves down with Legolas' ability. Then he attacks Ford the Vice, and, and that surprised me. Um, I wasn't expecting that. Um, right, so he gets one hit. I played orderly withdrawal here. Like, since he saw that I just had it, he's probably going to keep a card on the table, and I'm probably not going to get amazing use out of it. So I figured I might as well use it here to try to keep Rohan in better health. Um, I guess if he's thinking in military terms... Um, this is reasonable because Rohan's at war and they're getting stronger. So if he is able to quick get Helm's Deep, then that's two points. But it feels like military is a little ways off. So, um, Okay, so I did get to... I got 
hit once, but I got to cancel it with orderly withdrawal. So that feels nice. And I got two hits back against him. Um, I picked up power two great, which is perfect because that allows me to um, bring the elves to war and keep him off of Lorien for a turn. Um, so that allows me to muster up there a lot better. Um, so I chuck Horn of Gondor. I think that makes sense. Um, all the rest of these cards are better for either healing or combat anyway. Okay, and they declare in Lorien again. Now I'm actually getting close to reasonable health where I could try to set out again. Like I'm at effective zero and I still have six steps to take before I actually get to Mordor. So it's still not good, but it's at least like if I get lucky and don't get hit for a while, then it's better. And of course, it's four eyes again. So I'm just, yeah, what the heck? I'll wait another turn. Um, then I move armies here. Interesting. I bring that elven elite and leader from Tower Hills out too, to put this army together. That feels like I'm just begging him to muster up and come get me, you know, but oh well. Um, so he attacked Helm's Deep, which I remember. Now I'm getting really excited about my free people's military thoughts here um, because I could play through a day and a night and take Orthanc right now. Um, but I'm still a little ways off from my two points. So I kind of want to not show that I'm that invested in a free people's military idea just yet. Anyway, and Dol Guldur is also open and the North is at war. So I'm, I'm thinking anyway. Um, okay. I end up mustering a Rohan elite. He moves some Nazgul. Or, yeah. He moves leadership. He attacks Helm's Deep. Um, he plays Swarm of Bats into my Daylight. That feels pretty good. Um, he gets one hit. I get zero. That is not the luck you'd expect. So I think he's trying to conquer it quick before this army attacks from West Emnet, right? Because this army could certainly beat up this army. Um, so he plays Deadly Strife, and he gets his two hits. And I get two hits back. Um, so now I probably could conquer it and take it back, but I'm not that scared of him getting a military win on me just yet anyway. Um, okay, right. So now I've brought Elrond in specifically so I can use his die. I'm thinking like with this army walking into Orthanc and this army walking into Dol Guldur, there's a chance I sneak a win this turn um, or next turn maybe. Um, oh, I accidentally drew a card for him. Redrew. Uh, I picked. A, I just pick up a strategy card. I'm a little surprised I didn't just play Power 2 Great right there. That seems weird to me. Why didn't I do that? Oh, right. I'm specifically wanting this army to attack Lorien so that it's just further away. So I have better odds of sneaking into Dol Guldur next turn. Um, yeah, now he attacks Lorien and now they're at war. And that's right. Now I play Power 2 Great and I use Elrond to keep the die. So that um, if he goes ahead and does something with this muster that's not that, then I can use a ring to walk, walk, and then at the start of next turn, because I get to go again, then walk, walk. And then I'll have Orthanc and Dol Guldur. And he could probably get Dol Guldur back, but it'll at least take him a bit of time. And um, also, I could walk into here with not the whole force and then send this army up to go and help fight for Dol Guldur too. Or maybe they can even try to go get something from Moria anyway. Anyway, um, but he sees my plan coming and spends the muster, so I'm bummed about that. Um, okay, so I choose to just walk with it anyway, because at least this way, at the start of next turn, I get to take Orthanc guaranteed. So that's something anyway. L sorry, like, I get to put it under siege without him mustering it anymore. And there's no Saruman, so that means he can't play New Powers Rising. He might have Olog High or Half Orcs. Yeah, he does have Half Orcs and Goblin Men. But, but yeah, anyway, that's what it is. Okay, um, so what do I chuck? I chuck Kindred of Glorfindel. Yeah, that's reasonable. Um, also, getting this army put together in the Shire feels nice because that's actually an army that can threaten a little bit. Like, I'd like to muster it up more, you know, a few more elites from the north and maybe a leadership or two. Uh, but if this got to Mount Gundabad without it getting mustered anymore, like, that's a threat. You know, I might be able to pull that off. Um and also with We Prove the Swifter and Gwai here, there's certain, like, the plan anyway is that after this army takes Orthanc, then Aragorn and Boromir will be free to join an army elsewhere. Um, yeah. Anyway. Right. I declare in Lorien, and he got me on 
uh, a new moment for me. I hadn't realized that declaring in the same spot as the Balrog means he gets to draw a tile. So, um, yeah, that was silly. So, anyway, I heal one and then take three damage, so that doesn't feel good. Um, that was just stupid on my part. Huh? Right, I think I was thinking about taking them as casualties instead. But I think I end up choosing to keep them because I still want to be able to separate them maybe with one of these cards um, to help the free people's military attacks anyway. Um, right, so I use Galadriel's Die here to attack for Thank. He plays Half Orcs and Goblin Men to make it a little bit tougher for me. Um, so what do I do now? Oh, right, I muster an Elite in Lorien, of course, because I still want that to be difficult for him anyway. Um, and he chucks... Oh, that hurts. That he he had to lose War of Sword and Toil and Day Without Dawn to remove Power Too Great. And then I use the Will of the West to also put an Elite in there. Yeah, it's going to be... Um, it's <clears throat> certainly not impossible, like if he had Grand. Maybe he could wipe it out in one shot right now, but it's uh, it's tough in there anyway, Like especially with Legolas adding to the leadership that makes um, like, like a Brave Stand, or if I had Sudden Strikes, that would make all those pretty powerful. Um... Okay, so he attacks Plargear. Right, he sees that I don't have any muster, so he makes a good choice in going after Dol Amroth. That makes sense. Um, okay. we both roll no hits, so he gets into Plargear. Um, he attacks Lambden. No card, no card. He gets me. I get not a hit back. That's that. Um, so yeah, I attack Orthanc because you want to crack it open sometime. I, I play no quarter here because it's like I'm at a full 10 dice, because I've got my full 5 leadership, so it's likely that I should get one hit anyway. So getting that extra hit feels good. Um, I think it's actually it was slightly more likely that I roll two sixes, actually. But I just roll three sixes, because that's even better. Um, <laughs> and he doesn't roll any hits back, so that feels good anyway. Um, and I'm also, if he does get close to 10 points, it's nice that this army is still so strong that I could come back and take Helm's Deep uh, if it needed to. Um, so he puts Dole Emroth under siege. Um, I move the Fellowship. Right. I think I want to declare out of Lorien so that I'm able to separate these companions. That's the main point here. Um, but also, I don't quite want to set out with this army yet. I want to sit and muster up a little bit more and then kind of head over here because I think moving to Buckland, you haven't committed yet. That's still on course for Mount Gundabad or Moria. Um, cause that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah. It's four movement either way. Mount Gundabad, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Um, but after moving to Buckland, then you have to commit. And then I think I would clearly want to go through North Downs, pick up this elite and then go to Mount Gundabad, maybe be joined by these elites too. Um, the so fellowship is safe. Doesn't get hit. Um, and he uses a ring to attack Lorien. And I use the Brave Stand here, which I'm a little sad about, but... Yeah. It's still, like, stalling him out here so that this army doesn't leave is, is still good for me anyway. Um, <clears throat> he gets one hit. I get two. Uh, presses. Um, he gets no hits. I get three. So that's, that's rough luck for him anyway. Uh, he presses, and he gets four sixes. So, yeesh. That hurts. I get two hits back. He keeps pressing. I guess he really wants to blow up Lorian before I can muster in. Um, it's it's certainly a dangerous game here, anyway. Um, I was certainly tempted to use Third Day and a Night for Confusion, because if he rolled a couple ones and I rolled a few hits, I might blow up that army right now. But at the same time, like just as I'm going for a Free People's Military event, this is such a valuable card. It's just so powerful. <clears throat> Got a tickle in my throat. Ooh. Um, okay, so he gets one hit. I get two. Right, he does not press. I pick up a card because... I don't know. What else am I going to do with that? Um, I think I'm... What am I hoping for with that character card? I'm not sure. I might be hoping... I think I'm hoping for a heroic death or a sudden strike to turn Lorian. If I had a sudden strike, maybe I would sortie with a ring right there. Um, I don't know. 
I'm also hanging on to these daring defiances here. I'm, I, I think I was planning on playing Gwai here for if he plays a character card and it's Durin's Bane. I'm getting to cancel that with daring defiance is huge. No, anyway. <coughs> so mighty attack also a great card for trying to win free people's military win anyway. Um, and I chuck Gwai here. Here, interesting. Weird. Never mind. I'm not a robot. I don't understand myself at all. Um, and then I don't declare. What the heck, Bob? I really don't understand me. Um, so he gets a great role for beating me anyway, this turn, um, or not this turn, but you know what I mean? Uh, like that as maybe you don't know what I mean. I don't make sense as a person going for a free people's military victory. This is the last thing I want to see. I want to see him roll lots of eyes and lots of palantirs. Um, this gives him all the flexibility in the world for moving armies and for mustering up in response to where I go. So, um, I, Right, obviously I have to pick one dime. Um, and now that he's brought in the mouth, now that means I can get Gandalf, which I think he forgot, actually. So I bring in Gandalf here. Um, I have a very specific plan. We'll see in a moment. Um, so I wanted to get Gandalf quick before he played Day Without Dawn, because obviously I didn't know that he discarded it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, that's both of us having a bit of noob. Uh, I, I reference how I... Forgot that the Balrog could just cycle on me while I declared there. Um, okay, so he plays Nazgul Strike. Um, right, I remember he did that pretty quickly. Wait, we just... Oh. I was about to say that it's weird that I didn't point out that he's not allowed to move the mouth and Gothmog there. Um, but I, I totally missed it. Um Right, he rolled front and he missed. Um, so he's going after Lorien some more. Right, because the, the Balrog only adds two combat dice and it adds three leaderships. So that's why he's rolling four dice now. And he rolls three sixes, which is just... That's frustrating. Anyway, um, I remember being, being really annoyed by that because I was thinking about playing a card to try to... Hang on to it, but it doesn't matter what card I would have played because Swarm of Bats would have canceled it, so those three sixes would have stood anyway. And I only roll two hits. If I'd rolled a third hit there, which is pretty likely, um, then I would have killed him. But that's, uh, yeah, that's just how the game goes sometimes. Um, Okay, so he conquers Lasarnak and bring in brings in the backup here. Because yeah, between Helm's Deep and Lorien, he's at um, <clears throat> five points now with Pilargear. So all he has to do is conquer Minas Tirith and Dol Amroth, and then get one more point somewhere, like go over and get Edoras, or go get Dale, uh, and then and then he's got it. So, um, so I lead with my Will of the West here for enacting my plan because I don't want to get hit with Day Without Dawn. And this is the first of two huge mistakes that I make this game is that I don't leave any regulars behind because um, like he sees that this army might be coming for Dol Guldur. So he starts mustering up. Um, so this part's all fine. Um, and then I use through a day and a night to get there. And then I have two attacks, one to put it under siege and one to conquer it. And with the other one, I'm going to use we prove the swifter and bring and with Ar Aragorn's level three. So one, two, three, four, five is exactly enough to bring him over and then I'll have one attack to finish getting to four points this turn um, so we can't do anything with it. So that's my plan. The su silly, silly thing that I missed anyway, so I put Dol Guldur under siege. Like, so he mustered twice there, of course. And he almost uses a ring to draw a card, which is, I remember being like, please do that, please do that, please do that. Because that makes sense if you're desperately trying to hold on to Dol Guldur. But it doesn't make sense because he noticed what I noticed after I'd left out with my armies is that these two guys, he has three dice, can go walk, 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 and claim five points, and then he wins. Even if I conquered Ol Guldur, if you both reach your 10 and four points, Shadow Player wins. So even if I'd left one regular behind in either Erebor or Woodland Realm, then I could have won this turn, assuming the siege goes well, which it should, because I have Anduril and Mighty Attack, and like I have, and I'll have three companions there. So that's just, that's so strong. Like, that's three guaranteed hits. And I've got, like, enough elites there to last for a couple rounds. So, 
anyway, um, but he sees it and he starts walking towards it. So I have to um, choose my poison here. And I decide to muster two regulars like that. If I muster just one in Dale, um, or wait, am I right? I didn't have any reg elven regulars to muster. Um, and I didn't want to let him get a stronghold for free. So at least this way, if he attacks Dale, there's a chance that, um, a pretty good chance anyway, that this guy survives and can retreat to Woodland Realm. So he at least doesn't get it for free. Um, so then he brings this arm, these armies out because he's going to come and fight me for a dull gold I think is the plan. And then I pray we prove the Swifter, play we prove the Swifter to bring those companions over. Um, and he gets Edoras um, to get that other point. So, yeah. Okay, um, Fellowship continuing to not declare. I'm still surprised by that. I really should have declared in Parth Calabrant here. Um, not only because it would be nice to be able to separate those companions and bring them over here for help, but also because if I declare and draw an eye, that kills the Balrog, and then that's one more tool off the board for him to use this turn. So anyway, so that's what I roll... It's not bad. Um, it's only two attacks, though. And I only have one eye. I have one ring here. So it's not great. Um, I lead with attacking Dol Guldur because, you know, I'm worried, like, what if he just picked up Orcs Multiplying again or Pits of Mordor or Orlok High? Um, yeah. Um, turns out he didn't. Uh, he had Shadow was moving, which is a good card, but uh, not exactly what he wants. So I, I don't remember which one I opened with. Right, I'm not shining because there's no Inazgul leadership, so I obviously don't need to. Um, and I lead with a character card, probably Mighty Attack then? Or, yeah, it's probably Mighty Attack. Yeah, and he cancels it with Swarm of Bats. So I'm, I'm, I remember specifically not playing Anduril first because I was worried about Swarm of Bats, so I was pleased with that. Like, Mighty Attack being canceled is still bad, but <clears throat> certainly better having that canceled than uh, Anduril. So I roll 1-6, which is okay. That's a little bit below average, but it's okay. And he gets one hit. That's also about what you'd expect. Um, so I press. Um, and now I'm playing Anduril. It just feels so cool getting to play Anduril, cracking open this uh, stronghold, just like, yeah, Aragorn on a rampage. Feels good. So I roll 1-6. Um, that helps anyway. Uh, he gets one hit back. And naturally, I press. Although, actually, maybe I shouldn't have here, because now I know he doesn't have any strategy cards. He only had one, and he just played it. I remember realizing after the fact that I didn't need to press there. So, anyway. Um, but I press anyway, and I get my six. And he does not get a hit back, so that's great. Um, now, as a shadow player, you have to either get to 10 points to win, or you have to get me off of my four points to not lose. Um, I think there's an argument. Ah, that's tough. Because you could muster up a little bit and try to go get some more points here. Um, if you crack Dole Amroth, then you only need two points from here. Like, maybe go get Woodland Realm. Um, but I do still have... Yeah, I still have plenty to reinforce, and these guys are at war, and I have a couple musters, so that... Yeah, um, he goes after, yeah, yeah, he, he calculates this out, and he got the right mouth for this. Anyway, he got the one that extends your siege by a round for free. So I remember being, um, thinking at this point, like, really regretting not attacking last turn. And, uh, like, if I left a regular behind, I could have wrapped this up last turn, and this would be easy. Now I have to hold it out against these armies for a whole turn. Um, so I noticed that he's... Um, what do you call it? Yeah, he's coming for me. So I bring this guy down because he's at war. He can walk in and join me. And that's, you know, an extra hit point. I have to use my ring to get him in there. But uh, that's just what I got to do at this point. Um, so he brings the Balrog along, which makes a lot of sense. That's leadership. Like him in the mouth, that's leadership to use against Gandalf Shining here. So I was definitely tempted to attack right now um to use my ring and attack just to kill the balrog so that he didn't have that leadership but at the same time he's rolling three dice right there so and i don't know what cards he has in it like i know the character card so i guess i could know that they're not that good but but still three dice and three leadership like i'm probably gonna take at least two hits there 
And that's me spending my ring, not getting another hit point in there. So I think about it for a bit, but it seems like a poor choice to me in the end. Um, maybe I could have attacked and used my sudden strike to blow him up. But again, I'm, I'm also not giving myself another hit point by doing that. Maybe I should have used the sudden strike. Oh, well. Um, where the Witch King go? Oh, the Witch King's down in Dole Amroth. Okay. I was just thinking, if the Witch King's there too, then maybe I really should have done that. And I should have just gone to reclaim Lorien. But anyway. Um, okay. So I pick up a card because, yeah, looking to weather the storm. Obviously, he's not about to attack me with that, so I don't have to show that I'm using the ring right now. Um, okay, so he goes and gets fold, which makes sense. Um, now I use the ring to finish moving that guy in. And right, I move some of these troops out because then maybe I could do something funny with Pass of the Woeses and go get some points from Mordor because I have Pass of the Woeses there. Um, he puts Stogol Doer under siege, of course. I pick up another card. Um, right. So he's using the mouth ability and attacking Bill Goldur. And I play a sudden strike here because, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you want to play them all sooner or later. Um, and he's playing no cards. So I'm thinking, like, if he is saving good cards for later, I'd rather use my defensive ones when he's going to score more hits. So, anyway. Um, so there's my pre. Um, you would expect 1.6 hits, you know, so probably two, but at least one. Zero is, was a bummer for sure. Um, and then he rolls one hit, which is slightly below average, and I roll two hits, which is, I think, also below average. Um, okay, and then he gets his free press. And then I commit to my killing this army and winning right now because two sudden strikes on five leadership just feels so good. But I just, oh no, I, I do get one hit. So one hit on my extra 10 dice is like, yeah. Now, I'm, I, after I played it, I kind of wish that I kept it just because getting to put this army there in Asgiliath and then Minas Tirith could break out and come help. Like there's there's hope that way. Uh, and now there isn't hope that way. Um, and then he rolls two sixes and I get three hits back. So fairly standard um it's a little scary though okay so right he doesn't downgrade his elites anymore because he doesn't have to yet and of course i have um what do you call it i already used a ring and i'm done picking up cards so i can't do anything to make my situation better here with this mustard die um so he doesn't have to rush it right now um he uses a ring to attack again uh, my shine. So the sad thing about shining here is I know I'm not decreasing his leadership at all, but he has five character cards in hand. And if I let that Nazgul leadership stand, then he can probably play some of them, you know, um, like, you know, four, <laughs> he has four cruel as deaths and a dread and despair here. Like all of those are pretty powerful for this situation. So, uh, yes, Gandalf shining is absolutely mm -hmm. worth it here. Um, okay. so I play shield wall and, you know, it happens to run into two sixes. So that feels good. And I roll two hits back. Um, it's still feeling, it's feeling very scary here. Um, he just needs to roll two hits and he's got it. Um, so he plays no card. And I play heroic death here because, you know, I've got two regulars, like I got to protect them. And he rolls three sixes. So that hurts. And here's my second game ending mistake. Um, I just covered why keeping Gandalf is so critical. Um, but I choose to kill Gandalf instead of Aragorn. They're both level three, so you'd want to use one of those two for the heroic death here, so as to preserve your army more. Um, my choice in keeping Aragorn was because I'm thinking, like, this army isn't that big. If I just, you know, if I just get lucky, I can blow them up, and that's how I'm going to survive. But I really did not think it through. Like, if he has all these cards here. Like, I, I knew that. I, I guess I just undervalued them, though. Um, and he attacks Dol Guldur again. No card, no card. So I got lucky that he forgot. Like, he just didn't register that me killing Gandalf meant he could play. Um, we talked about this afterwards. And if he had played Gruel as Death right there, that's two hits. Like, there's two fives there. Um, so he gets zero hits, and I get three. So that's huge. Um, 
Yeah, because if he'd played a card right there, that would have been two hits, and he'd have taken Del Goldur, and I would be down to four dice next turn with a Fellowship still five steps away from Mordor and in not great health, and he would be on six points. So, yeah, it would uh, most likely have been that for him. So he uses the mouth free press because like, you got to try, you know, like he doesn't have a card to help him attack with the Palantir here and he's already used to ring. Um, so now he remembers that he can play a card. So now he plays cruel as death. Still rolling three dice. Thanks to that Balrog. So it is possible that he could get two hits and I could get zero. Um, that's not very likely though. So he gets one hit and I get one. So, um, there's just one dwarf and Boromir and Aragorn and a bunch of leadership standing in Dol Guldur after um, the mouth and the Balrog die. Um, just just crazy stuff. Um, some mistakes on both our parts. Uh, some good plays on both our parts. Um, a wild game. Um, I feel really, really dumb for not leaving a regular behind. Like, I really should have had the game in the bag last turn. Um, I got lucky here um, that my not killing Aragorn mistake um, didn't get punished. Anyway, um, yeah, um, so let's take a look at the, not the discarded cards, the statistics. Um, okay, so I think these are flopped again because there's more combat dice for the free peoples here. So um, the shadow player rolled minus one, six, minus six on fives. I rolled minus six on sixes plus zero on five. So that's pretty bad for both of us, um, about equally bad. Um, I guess that's a little worse for me, actually, just because minus six, like six and five is about equal. Those almost always count for free peoples, whereas fives only sometimes count for the shadow player. So, yeah, um, let's see. Plus five on Palantirs for me. That kind of sucks. Plus three on Wills is great, though. Um, plus three on H's. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like about average luck anyway. Um, just, yeah. Mistakes were made. Stuff happened. A, a pretty epic showdown, I think, between Aragorn, Boromir, and Gandalf versus the Mouth and the Balrog and Dol Guldur. Um, I thought it was a pretty cool game anyway. Um, yep. Thanks for watching. Oh, and uh, <laughs> uh, this might... Hopefully, I, you know, make it to a top three spot. But if I don't, please vote for my Free People's Military win on the in the tournament, because if uh, if I mine gets upvoted, then I get a set of dice. So, and uh, that would be nice. Anyway, thanks. Bye.